That's crazy. Wow, thank you all very much for coming to tonight's, uh, what was it? Oh, demo day, it's right there. Um, apparently the last two times I did this, I forgot to say my name, so this time I'm just gonna be like, hello, my name's Felix. I'm an instructor at Co-Chrysalis. Um, so if after this event you feel like being tortured by a German guy for like 12 weeks, uh, sign up and I'll do the honors. <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't want to steal much time away from, um, from words. Uh, the main attraction this night, which is CC8, um, but I do want to do, uh, give out some, uh, some words, some thanks. Uh, first up, let me get a show of hands. Who here is a software engineer? All right, cool. I hope all 10 hands go up there. <laughs> who here is a hiring manager or someone who is looking to hire people? Ooh, beautiful. So I hope you all remember. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. So, um, just want to give a couple of thanks to some of the um, partners that help make this possible. A big thank you and shout out to um, Pivotal, who continuously give a great, very unique workshop to our students. Um, yeah, so, thank you. And uh, a big thank you to Rocket and Rapid API um, for their collaboration with us and with the students. You will today see one of the projects um, done in collaboration with them and get some more information that way. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, I am gonna give it up to our master of ceremonies for tonight, which is Florent. My name is Sean, and I'm going to be your MC tonight. Uh, firstly, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight, because uh, today is a very special day for us. We get to share and talk about our apps, our technologies that we used here at Good Business. Uh, it was an intense ride for us. It all started uh, in the pre-course, and then it was a roller coaster ride. Um, we, we learned about computer science and uh, we dived into deep learning about programming. Uh, I see Anya is ready. She will be talking about web components and how to use them. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Anya. that I made during the whole Chrysalis uh, with me conf. So first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Anya, I'm from Poland. For the last nine years, I've been living in Japan. And uh, I've been working as an account manager for five years now. And last year, I started learning uh, how to code just by like a hobby, but I enjoyed it so much that it became more like uh, more than a hobby, and this year I quit my job and decided to join to Chrysalis and become a full stack developer. So first, let me introduce web components. Um, so let's imagine that you've built some application in React, and then you've created something else in Vue, but uh, you also want to make something different that kind of has the same functionality that the project that you've already built. So unfortunately, in this case, you won't be able to reuse the components between the frameworks, but uh, web components would help you if you use them. You would just be able to reuse them in your next project. So what are web components? Web components are the UI building blocks. They are created only with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you can use them kind of like puzzle pieces to create your own applications. Also, amazing thing about them is that they are supported by all the major browsers at the moment. 
So web components is an umbrella term for web standards that you can use uh, separately or combined together. And two of the most important ones are the custom elements, which are the custom HTML tags that you can create with all the styles and functionality inside and use in your project. And also the Shadow DOM, which is a DOM tree that you can attach to the DOM tree of your application and none of the um, functionality and styles from the Shadow DOM will affect your application outside of it. So here are some benefits of using web components. You can compose your application from smaller parts and also reuse the components that you've built in other projects. It's also easier to maintain because they are small and easier to debug. You can use them in any fr frameworks that you want. You can create some pattern libraries. And also it's very small learning curve because they only use vanilla JavaScript. So now I will shortly introduce the Polymer project. So Polymer project was allowing to use web components more easily. But not only that, they are also making uh, various proposals to evolve the web components in natively in the browser. So they are used by and if you have any questions, ask me after our demo. Thank you very much, Anya. Um, I forgot to mention that the first three speakers of tonight will be talking about their uh, their tech talk that we had to prepare for in week eight. Uh, the full tech talks were 30 minutes public tech talks, but tonight They'll, there will be just three minutes condensed tech talk. Uh, tech talks about about that. Uh, the second speaker tonight is Yasu. He's our only Japanese member uh, in the in the class right now. He loves to travel. He has been to over 40 countries. Uh, and he's um, a fun fact about him: went scuba diving at zero degrees temperature in Lake Baikal, Russia. For those of you who don't know, Lake Baikal is the deepest lake in the world with a depth of 1,642 meters. That is awesome. So please, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yasu. Today, I will be talking about beginner-friendly machine learning library called ML5.js. I'll cover three things. What's machine learning? What's ML5? And I will do demos. Before I start, let me introduce myself. My name is Yasu. I'm from Osaka, Japan. I used to work as IT and business management for some for five years. And I, I was at the business side, I, but I wanted to create my own product. So here I am at Code Chris Race. So let's start. What's machine learning? Machine learning is defined the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Let me give you one example. Here's my drawing. People know what Pikachu is, but program don't. But using machine learning, it can take the characteristic of my drawing and actually identify that this is a Pikachu. So even it can paint based on my drawing. So what's the difference between usual programming and machine learning? Usual programming, you input data and you get answer. Very straightforward. But the machine learning and the supervised learning, there are two steps. First, you input data, but not only data, you input answer. And then the model is created. And using that model, you input data and machine learning now can predict what's the data. So, if I input the image of Pikachu and say that this is Pikachu, the model now can identify what Pikachu is. So if I input another image of Pikachu, it can predict that it might be a Pikachu. So this is how machine learning works. Then what's ML5.js? ML5.js is a JavaScript, JavaScript library for machine learning built top on tensorflow.js. It's very easy to use. So if you want to create an image classification uh, application, you only need two lines. And not only image classification, there are so many functions. So if you're interested, you can visit the website and try it by yourself. So now moving on to the demo part. On my application, there will be a black canvas. And on the center, there will be a white circle. I will try to move that using machine learning. 
have. I will show uh, thumbs up and thumbs down. And I will tell that on, on the, in front of the web camera, if I do thumbs up, it means go up white cycle. If I do thumbs down, it means go down. So let me give you a demo here. So first, I teach thumbs down. So this is thumbs down, and I'm clicking the down. So now it remembers what is down. But if I do thumbs up, it still don't know. So I click up. Now it remembers thumbs up. And if I do thumbs down, yeah, it remembered. <laughs> Okay, so I talked about what machine learning is, what's ML5.js, and I show, I did display how did that works. That's it for my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yasu. Um, our next speaker is an uh, Angular enthusiast. Uh, his goal in life is to make everybody use Angular. Who here in the house is using Angular? Okay, I see one hand there. Three people. Okay, for the rest, here, uh, Constantine here will make you definitely use Angular. Because that's his goal. Um, uh, another fun fact, he won a Taekwondo championship in uh, Hamburg. Yeah, he's our champion. Um, I want to tell you about um, Radio Taiso here at Kokku Solis. We usually do that every morning. It's, uh, it's uh, an activity that we usually enjoy, but not all the time, because uh, sometimes we have to do extreme Radio Taiso, and that involves burpees. I don't know if everybody knows what purchases are, but it's, they're, they're quite difficult. Okay, uh, I see our speaker is ready, so I'm going to give uh, your you. and your enthusiast tonight. <laughs> Please give us more. Thank you, Florian. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, today I would like to give you a short introduction to Angular. But before we get into that, we, uh, I'd like to talk about what we all came here for today. Me. <laughs> so, my name is Konstantin, and I am originally from Germany. Um, just last summer, I have graduated high school and have been in a about six-month-long internship at an IT company in Germany. Um, but I decided that I wanted to take this software development thing more serious, so I decided to join Code Chrysalis here in Japan to improve my skills to the point where I can, which at this point I do. All right, but without further ado, let's get into Angular. Uh, so some general information about Angular. Uh, Angular was released in 2016 under the name of Angular or Angular 2 as the successor to Angular JS. And although they, they share similar functionalities, as well as, of course, the name, uh, they are 2019 according to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. All right, but what's the goal of Angular? So for one, it wants to provide you with a framework that makes it easy for, easier for you to create single page applications. Um, with, uh, with also the goal to make them as performant as they can be, so it feels like native, uh, like, like a native experience. But what I believe is the most important thing and the best thing about Angular is that it comes with a ton, tons of functionality out of the box, such as uh, polyfills. Polyfills is uh, a technology that makes it possible for you to use your applications across many different browsers and devices and as many versions as possible. Um, and of course, to be able to achieve native performance, a uh, native experience, they try and do their best to um, have, of course, offer good performance and have a low memory footprint. And uh, it comes with many built full-fledged front-end applications, so tools like Redux or state management in general, 
um, an HTTP client to connect to a backend or just client-side browsing or navigation. So my conclusion, uh, throughout the 12 weeks that I had at CodePressList, I had the VSAR, my socials, and if you have any other questions about Angular, feel free to approach me after the talks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Constantine. Uh, halfway through the program, we must do a solo MVP project. For, uh, for it to better understand this concept, we had an activity called Spaghetti and Marshmallow, where we had to uh, create a framework out of spaghettis, and on top of it, we had to uh, put up one piece of marshmallow. Um, our team set their goal really high, and the, the, the framework did not hold. Um, we did not know that we have, we need to have a minimum viable product. Uh, but it was a good lesson to learn. So uh, we did. Tonight, uh, Shruti will be talking about her solo MVP project in React Native. So uh, everybody, please welcome Shruti. before, but I wanted to explore the development of IT industry, so I decided to join Code Chrysalis. So while at Code Chrysalis, I worked on Vue and React, and I really enjoyed the front-end frameworks, so I decided to also learn uh, React Native, that's why I chose a project on React Native during my solo MVP at uh, Code Chrysalis. So first of all, what is React Native? It's an open source framework for writing native mobile apps and you can target both Android and iOS with a single code base. Uh, so if you want to make a mobile app fast for both the uh, platforms, then React Native is a good choice. And also, it, uh, it's quite new. It's released in March 2015, and it is developed and maintained by Facebook. So some basic concepts about uh, React Native. If you have worked on React, you might know about components, but if not, basically everything that you see on a screen is a component. So in React Native, you have some uh, predefined components that you can directly use. So for example, if you want to make a picker, uh, like a dropdown, you can use the picker component from React Native library, and uh, it's quite easy because it's like pre-made. You just have to use that tag. Uh, then the styling. So if styling in React Native is also very easy, it's like CSS basically. Uh, the only difference is uh, it from the um, kebab case, it changes to the camel case. So styling, if you know CSS, it's quite easy to do styling in React Native as well. Also for the positioning of elements, you use Flexbox, which is again supported by CSS as well. So um, it's very easy to get started with the React Native project if you know those. So, um, during my solo MVP, uh, which was two days, we have to make, uh, make a, uh, some app. Uh, I tried to make a React Native app uh, in, the, in two days only. So, it's a very small app, but it's called Translate. It helps you find the uh, freelance translators who are online. So, first of all, the architecture of my app looks like this. On the front end, I have React Native. I have Express Server. And uh, I have the database in Postgres. Uh, my uh, authentication is through Firebase Auth. And I'm using Socket.io for getting the list of online users, basically, who are connected to the server. So let me demo my app now. So uh, for example, uh, this is the home page. And if I need the help with translation, I can go in the app. So I am logged in, and I see uh, Mike is online, so he might help me with the translation. So I can go to his profile and uh, basically uh, check his phone number and uh, email address. 
if uh, I want to call him, I can call him on, through my phone. And uh, once the translation is done, I can also give him reviews. So something like. Then again, if I go to his profile, basically it's added. So this is a very small app. I wanted to add the features that you can basically call directly from this app. But I didn't have, unfortunately, I didn't have time. So maybe after my uh, like the course here, I can complete my app. So this is logout. Uh, that's all about my presentation. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have also given a full talk, like 30 minute talk about React Native. And here is the QR code for that. You can check out the, my full talk on YouTube. And these are my socials. So if you have any questions, you can ask me after the demo. <laughs> It's really important for a developer. At week nine, we had to build. It was polyglot week, and we had to pick a language, a programming language that we never learned before, and uh, build an application. Uh, our next three speakers are going to introduce their applications, building a language, a programming language that they never used before. So, our first speaker, uh, it's Johannes. His name is always autocorrected to Johannesburg. <laughs> He's officially known on Instagram as Johannesburg. <laughs> uh, he also uh, likes to play ukulele. And uh, he's our official organizer of uh, Friday lunches. He used his uh, solo MVP applications to find restaurants. And now he's uh, always telling us where to go on Fridays. Uh, I'm passing it to you, Johannes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Laura. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, Johannes. Uh, thank you very much for coming today. As Laura said, my name is Johannes, and I will speak about my first Android app. So, but first, uh, who am I? Uh, well, I'm from Sweden. I moved here to Japan Four years ago, just after getting my master in industrial engineering and management. And uh, I've been working the last four years for a Japanese company as the only foreigner at the headquarters. And yeah, Nippon Steel SD Wire, in Japanese is Nitte Tsuzumiki SD Wire. And yeah, during this time I worked as a sales strategist, but something that my, all my colleagues really loved to do was printing PDFs. And then, yeah, <laughs> and then putting it into Excel again. <laughs> that was not the, the favorite part of my work. So I decided to automate this process. So I learned Python and BBA and automated this. And that's how I discovered how fun programming is. And I found it fun enough to quit my job, change gear, and now I'm here to code Chrysalis graduating. So the contest for today, I will talk about my app idea, then the demo, and then technology that I used. So how did I come up with my app? Well, there is this game I really like. It's a strategy game, it's called Corridor, with a Q. And I wanted to play this game on my phone, so I said, why not just do it myself? So there are really simple rules. Uh, first, you move on tiles, and these tiles are connected by bridges. And you're allowed to move one step, or remove two bridges. And remote bridges have to be connected to next to each other. So, for a short demo. Yep, uh, first place start at the top. And the uh, second place up at the bottom, and they want to reach the other side. So they either walk, or they can remove pieces like this. And it might look really simple, really simple rules, but uh, all addictive things are. So if you try this, you will really be hooked. <laughs> uh, so, development. What did I use to develop my Android app? I used Kotlin. I also used Kotlin, 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 
because all you really need is half landing <laughs> and Android Studio. What's great about Kotlin? One thing is that it has interoperability with Java. What this means is that Kotlin can run on top of the Java virtual machine. And it can use all the libraries and frameworks that Java can use. But how do this work, you ask? Well, I'm not going to say that this is magic. But this is magic. <laughs> that was a joke, now you laugh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kotlin also has null safety. That means that you can't really set things to null. And because they have this safety feature that the Java does not have, it means that you get less bugs and null reference error. And fewer bugs, easier development, easier development, and you save a lot of money. And uh, that was all for me. If you want to reach out to me, talk with me after uh, this demo. Or contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Johannes Brugge. I mean, uh, Johannes. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Min. He um, will be talking about his uh, project, building Python in Raspberry Pi. Uh, Ming uh, worked in the military. He used to assemble missiles uh, and dog mines. His advice for everybody is uh, if you see a movie where somebody steps on a mine, don't trust that. That does not exist. Nobody steps on a mine and they do it. Uh, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to pass it to Ming. Everybody, please welcome Ming. I'll be uh, speaking about my application, I see you. Uh, before starting to talk about it, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kyung Min. I'm from Korea. I was a solution engineer, so I helped uh, operators and engineers to implement advertised slots in their services. But I like coding more, so I jo joined the code crystallist to enhance my engineering skills. So now, I'm a software engineer. Uh, let's back to the subject. Uh, I believe uh, autonomous driving will see a revolution uh, like smartphones. So I researched the, how the technology works. And this picture shows how the self-driving cars recognize their surroundings. Uh, when I saw this picture, something hit my head. And if I provide uh, this information to uh, blind people, their uh, working would be easier and safe. So here is the basic idea to build my application. Uh, using image recognition technology, my application provides the, what happens in front of users and uh, so that they can figure out their surroundings. Uh, here is the infrastructure. At the beginning, I'd like to build a mobile application with um, both systems having camera and speaker. Before uh, building the application, uh, I need to test what kind of information I can get from the machine learning libraries. And I would add other types of uh, sensors. Uh, so I built the Raspberry Pi server as a uh, prototype. And I chose to use Python because Python has strong uh, machine learning libraries. And before watching the demo, uh, I'd like to uh, explain how my application works. And here is the Raspberry Pi server, and it takes a picture uh, every second. And I 
decrease the resolution because uh, for every everyone's uh, privacy. <laughs> so don't worry about it. And on my laptop, uh, my application download the image and analyze the image and uh, show the result on the web page. Let's see the my application now. And there are three types of information. The empty box means the object area. Sometimes it's more. But yeah. The text top of the box means the object name. And the number means the confidence. Yeah. My application dots me. So I almost person now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> help other people, I need to improve my application. Uh, here's the feature features. The, the first one is provide the distance between users and the objects. The second one explain what objects in the picture do. And last one is provide specific information, not just person, at least just uh, gender. And have you enjoyed? Uh, hope you uh, guys enjoyed my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Min. Our next uh, speaker will be talking about uh, Flutter and uh, Dart. His name is Ian. Uh, he enjoys bowling. His uh, top score is 275. Um, he also enjoys darts and uh, another game that I cannot pronounce. Um, he, as a fun fact, went to Onheru Pilgrimage. Uh, that's a 1,400 kilometers ride. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ian. Uh, my name is Ian. I will be explaining to you a little bit my mobile app that I made using Flutter and Dart. So, off we go. Uh, okay. Sorry, a little glitch there in the last moment. So, as you mentioned, I went to the uh, Obreno pilgrimage down in Shikoku. Does anybody know what that is? Okay, a few people. 1,400 kilometers, fun time. Alright, so you might guess I've been here for a while, 15 years. Uh, permanent resident, speak Japanese pretty well. Uh, largely because I was in a Japanese IT company for a very long time, uh, doing project management, consulting, uh, you know, talking directly to customers, etc. Um, I enjoy throwing things, uh, but in a good way, uh, bowling, darts, and the game he can't pronounce is Mokka. Maybe I'm not pronouncing it very well either. It's a Finnish game. Check it out. M-O-L-K-K-Y. Anyways, on to the main meat here. Uh, Flutter and darts. So what is Flutter? We've heard a lot about React Native. Uh, you can create one code set and then compile it to iOS and Android. Uh, Flutter is a framework by Google, which is even more ambitious. So it's iOS, uh, Android, web, and desktop, all from the same code base. And it's also very new. Just last year, uh, this uh, version 1.0 was released. So for these two reasons, I really was very excited uh, to go ahead and pick this up during our Polyglot Week. And uh, Dart just happens to be the language, also made by Google, that you develop in when you're using Flutter. So, what did I make? A bar, any guesses? That might be a bit hard. How many people know Uber? Everybody I know, it's huge. Uh, so Uber does uh, right, drivers and passengers. Uh, I made the Uber for language teachers, A bar. So uh, maybe there's a teacher in a cafe who wants a student. And maybe there's a salesman. He doesn't have enough time to get back to the company. Maybe he'd like to brush up on his English while he's, while he's in Ikeboko or something. So. Let's see how this app might help them do that. So I'm going to switch over to my app here real quick. Here we are. It's a map-based interface using Google Maps. Uh, we have a couple of markers here where the teachers are. So I'll click on this one. Uh, Jane, let's look at her details here real quick. Uh, one star and English for tourists. Uh, maybe not. Thank you, Jane. Uh, moving on. Bunter. Rating five. Business English. Cheaper than Jane. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, in future versions, you will also have a booking screen and things like that. Uh, right now, that isn't there. 
Uh, but this is where we got in uh, one week of polyglottal experimentation. All right, so back to the slides for a couple of little takeaways here. So Flutter, uh, very new tech, very ambitious. I like building things from the ground up, and this allows you to get to many platforms uh, very quickly. And also, thanks so much to Cook Chrysalis for giving me a great base and letting me pick this up in a week and making that. That's really cool, and I'm proud, and I'm happy I came here. So uh, thank you very much. I'm Ian Cameron in Japan at LinkedIn, and come up and talk to me later. I'd love to share Flutter, Mocha, anything with you. Thank you. Project uh, is a Rakuten Rapid API uh, in collaboration with Rakuten Rapid API. Um, what that is is basically a marketplace for APIs, and uh, Rakuten asked us to uh, build an app <coughs> using their APIs. Uh, and after that, we had to present it and uh, tell them, give them some feedback on what to change. A little fun fact about that. Uh, while we were going to to Rakuten headquarters to present the app, the application actually crashed, <laughs> and we were uh, in the metro station on the bench trying to call our way out of it. But luckily, we did, and we got a working app for uh, for the Rakuten executives. All right. Uh, next, we'll have. Uh, Team uh, will be showing uh, Chuck Chooses, which I'm a part of, so let's start. Yes. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Thomas, this is Florin, who you met, and this is Ben. And we built a little application today called Chuck Chooses. Um, but first, before we introduce the app, a little bit about ourselves. So as I said, my name is Thomas, I come from the UK. I've been in Japan for about 15 years now, well Asia about 15 years now. Mostly Japan, but also China, Thailand, and Korea for a bit. Um, I was, well, I did uh, photography for a long time, so I was traveling around Asia as a travel photographer. And then, most recently, I was teaching English in universities in the Tokyo area. But a couple of years ago, I started playing code. I really liked it, so I quit all my jobs last year and took the dive to become a full stack developer. Okay, uh, yeah, you all know me, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more. Uh, I'm from Romania. Uh, I, came, I moved to Japan four years ago. Here I worked as an English teacher. I was uh, freelancing in my spare time, building websites, and I really enjoyed it. I loved it so much, I decided to further improve my skills and uh, join Code Chrysalis. Ben. Um, hello everybody, my name is Ben, I'm from Seattle, and um, fun fact, I have a PhD in math. Two years ago, I was, I know, it's the ultimate icebreaker. Um, <laughs> so, two years ago, I started to write down my research, and I defended my thesis, and I thought, this is great, I'll never take a test again. But boy, was I wrong. Uh, so, uh, I actually started teaching in a computer science department, and got really interested in software development, and found my way here to Code Chrysalis. Um, all right, without further ado, um, we'll dive into our app. Tommy? Okay, thank you, man. So, uh, during our time at Code Christmas, we had a challenge, a Rakuten Rapid API challenge. It's a challenge where we had to build an app using multiple APIs to get lots of information from all over the internet. And we had to use at least three Rakuten Rapid APIs. If you don't know what Rakuten Rapid API is, it's like an API supermarket where you can go and use one API key and get multiple different APIs to try to make life easier for developers. And at the end of it, we had to go up to the headquarters in Fushiko Tanjara and present the executives up there. So we went on to the website and had a look, and they had a variety of uh, categories, and one category was the cool APIs, and the number one cool API was Chuck Norris. So we thought we'd have a bit of fun and go for Chuck Norris themed application. And then for the whole website, the most popular API was Skyscan for getting your flight data, and this gave us the idea for Chuck Chooses. So I'd like to demo our application, which we built. So yes. <laughs> so Chuck chooses your next vacation. So he's going to pick your next vacation for you. We'll just hover over Chuck and see. So you can punch him, and if you punch Chuck Norris, you'll get an explosion of API calls. So let's try this out. Sorry. Oh, you can just check. And there we go. Um, so here we are. 
Uh, so Chuck, he knows where you are, he finds your location, and he's discovered that we're in Tokyo, and he's got uh, the most convenient airport near to us, and then he's chosen us a random destination. In this case, he's chosen New York, and we've got a flight for $741 on the 30th. And he's also given us the weather over there, and he's grabbed a random photo of New York. And we get a random Chuck Norris joke. <laughs> As an infant, Chuck Norris' parents gave him a toy hammer, he gave the world Stonehenge. <laughs> and now I'd like to hand over to Ben to go over the tech we used. Oh, sorry, Florian. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the tech that we used. Uh, we used the front uh, for the front end. We used React um, Express for the back end, and to retrieve the data, we used Axios. I love Axios; it's really straightforward. Okay. Uh, rapid and rapid API, like Tommy mentioned, but not only. And everything is deployed on Hero. Um, the architecture of our app, basically we have uh, an express backend, which is RESTful API, that we have for all our APIs, and then we're using Axios to get all that information from the, from the React front. Um, the API that we used, obviously, Chuck Norris, because we love it so much, uh, and we built our app entirely around it. Uh, we used Skyscanner for uh, for flight information, we use Dark Sky for uh, the weather information, Google API for geolocation on Splash for the, for the photos, and flight stats. The reason we are using two flight information APIs is going to go into detail Ben. Okay. Thank you, Florent. Okay. I'd like to tell you about some challenges that we had. You might think Chuck Norris, Chuck Chooses is such a simple app, um, but actually there were some interesting challenges. Because the cool thing about Chuck Chooses is it does everything for you. So it gets your location, and from the location it needs to figure everything out. Um, Skyscanner is taking an airport and giving you flights. So we need to find that airport. What's the right airport for you? So for example, if you're in Tokyo, you might think Narita, but what about Haneda? Um, and, depending on what API you use, maybe more obscure airports near Tokyo. This one's in Chofu. Um, so, the question is, how do we get the best airport from a user's location? Um, so, for example, just so you can see what we're looking at, coordinates, we want to get an airport. Okay, so we tried a number of different things. The first thing was um, this Airports Finder API. Um, had a problem, it gave us way too many airports and we didn't have any reasonable way to select the best one. Um, so for example, for New York, it gave us 16 different airports. Okay, so that one's no good. Um, we tried another one. This one gave us good airports, but it didn't take, uh, it, it took the city name, not the coordinates, which is okay, but then we'd have to chain together either multiple, an extra ABI call or use some sort of lookup table to combine the information and go from coordinates to city name, city name, then to the good airports, and then airports to flights, to be a little unreliable. Um, so the solution we found was we actually realized the Skyscanner um, has an extra functionality that wasn't listed on Rocketen. Um, you can take city code instead, instead of airport. TYO goes to flights. So we only need to find the city code, and we discovered this uh, extra API, which can give you that kind of information. Um, so that's how we solved that challenge. and. Um, I hope you enjoyed our presentation, and uh, please check out our app and connect with us on social media. All right, thank you very much. All right. Um, next will be our senior projects. Um, for two and a half weeks, we struggled so hard to to build awesome projects using everything that we learned. It was. Uh, a very intense period for us. Um, bugs were running around. Uh, when we slept, we dream about um, new features for our app. Maybe selling it for 1.2 million dollars. Uh, but yeah, like usually, that's just a dream because uh, we wake up and the master was broken overnight, <laughs> and nothing worked. Uh, no features. No, yeah. But during this time, we also had a lot of fun. Um, we get to make more 
contact with, with the, the other classmates and it already feels like uh, nothing is against us anymore. Yeah, um, another uh, thing that I want to mention, another activity that we, I love here at Code Crystalis is uh, um, CCC, it's called Code Crystalis Karaoke, where uh, one speaker will give us five random slides and one random topic and somebody will have to just use that topic and that random slide that he does not know about and uh, talk about and why the reason is funny and we had a little blast with it is because the topics were really interesting like um, how to survive in prison or um, how to become a vampire and you can imagine the fun that we have with that all right, our next team uh, is Team Nightshade, and they were going to talk about Scrivener. So without further ado, I'm going to give it to Tommy. Hello, thank you again. <laughs> so yes, my name is uh, Tommy, or Thomas, and this is Min, and this is Ian, and we are Team Scrivener, oh, sorry, Team Nightshade, and we created an app called Scrivener. So today we'd like to introduce you to this application. This was our final uh, project, so we had to think of an idea which we'd all enjoy building. And I'd like to talk you through the ideation process first. So eventually we decided we'd like to build, we'd like to replicate one of Google services, um, just to tackle it as a technical challenge. And we all decided upon Google Hangouts, their video calling service. And we thought, how can we improve Google Hangouts, add extra functionality, or just make it better? Uh, first, we kind of thought of the AR filters, which are popular these days, the augmented reality, kind of funny, cute stuff, like you get a Snapchat. But it's been done so much, so earlier on, we were thinking about a language application app. So we thought, okay, how can we improve Google Hangouts for language study? And this led us to the idea of being able to go back and check your conversations. Maybe you missed some vocabulary or something you didn't understand and you'd love to go back and check. So how else could checking conversations be used for this application? And it'd be, we thought it'd be good for negotiations, business, contracts, things like that. Also, uh, maybe interviews with people, or possibly diplomatic stuff to keep things transparent. And this led us to the idea of um, getting recordings and transcriptions of your call, which you could go back to and possibly also mark points during the conversation. So I'd like to introduce you to a possible use case of this. We have Taro Yamada. And he's a salaryman in Tokyo, and he takes online English lessons twice a week with Mike Sensei. <laughs> so, um, but during those lessons, he likes to focus on the speaking, on his fluency, so he doesn't really take notes, and he often forgets some other vocabulary words he would like to ask about, or some of the grammar, or just some points in general. So we thought the solution for this would be being able to go back and check, and also, maybe during the conversation, being able to tap a button and put a bookmark on a point you'd like to go back and check. And this gave us Scrivener, which is voice calls, plus automatic transcription, which will get delivered to you afterwards, and the possibility to tap a button and put a bookmark, bookmark during the conversation. Okay, I'd like to now hand over to Ian to introduce the application. All right, thank you so much, Tommy. So yes, I will be continuing the demo for this evening. Tommy will now retire to a strategic distance. <laughs> nothing up this sleeve, nothing up that sleeve. All right, here is the Scrivener uh, interface. Uh, you see we have uh, up on the, I'm already logged in here. So we have a little search so you can add more contacts. Uh, you see I've got some online and offline contacts down below that. Uh, Tommy is already online. And he is off in the distance. The door has been shut and sealed. So if this doesn't work, it's really going to be embarrassing. All right, so here we go. I'm going to try. I'm going to click the little phone mark here and give Tommy a call. Got a little phone icon. He's picked up. Hello, Tommy. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? No, I can't hear you. All right. <laughs> All right. We will hang that one up. It's been a bit finicky recently. We'll try one more time here. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Hello, Tommy. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. 
I'm guessing not. All right. Okay. Well, that's why we've got a backup plan. All right. So here's a little uh, demo for you then. I'm going to give a call uh, to my friend Tommy and uh, ask him about the contract that we're working on right now and bookmark the number uh, that he tells me. So let's try that out. You see we have our calling icon and Tommy will pick up. Um, hello Tommy. Hi. Uh, I'm just calling about the contracts that we were discussing last week. Oh uh, yes, we are applying to sign it in September. Yes, that's the one. Um, I was just trying to remember the final number uh, while I'm making the draft. The final figure was $300,000. 300,000 US dollars. Okay, uh, thank you so much. I will make up the new version of the draft and send it to you this afternoon. Okay. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there we are. Uh, now we have a little uh, alert here on the screen. It says your transcription is being processed, so we just have a few minutes, uh, not even, to wait. Um, the software is recording as it goes, so once you're done, it just has to send it from the server to Google, and there it is, it's already done. I'm going to click OK here, and uh, go to the transcriptions page and see what we can find. Uh, so here it is, our newest conversations are on the top, so I'm going to open up this most recent one. And there we are, um, here is our transcription. So I'm just calling about the contract that we were discussing last week, signed it in September, final figure was $300,000. And you can see down here, uh, we also have the bookmark, which I placed a little bit late uh, in the conversation. I meant to push the button a little bit earlier, but there you go. And also, uh, Google tells us how confident it is in the transcriptions that it sends back. And so we take that confidence rating, and things that are especially low confidence, we add a little question mark to the transcription, so you know that it's maybe not the best. So there you have it. Uh, a quick tour of the contacts page and the transcriptions page. I hope you enjoy it. All right, not quite the real thing, but very, very close. I can't show you the transcript that was in the video. There we go, here's our transcription page. Oh no. Oh no, it's not there anymore? Okay. But yes, it's there. So there we go, uh, very cool automatic transcriptions uh, from a voice call. So how did that happen? That was that's something that uh, in the video took place through the magic that is the internet. So let me just explain how we did that. We use a protocol uh, called WebRTC. This stands for Web Real-Time Communication. And uh, it allows for direct peer-to-peer -peer data transfer, including streaming. So it's not going through a server, it's just going straight to Tommy while we're talking. So we've got me and Tommy. Uh, we don't know how to talk to each other, though, uh, by default. So in WebRTC, you have to set up what's called a signaling server, and this takes care of the initial coordination. I say, I want to talk to Tommy, here's my information, he replies uh, similarly, and then we're connected and we can speak directly in a streaming fashion. So that's how the uh, speech part takes place. To go into other technical details, I'll hand it off to me. Thank you. Uh, here's the technology that we used. Uh, as Ian mentioned, the socket I have the communication between users and signaling server. We built front end side with React Redux. We used the materialize for our application design. And we built the server using Node.js Express.js on Heroku. After finishing their speech, the server has two audio files. Uh, one is from Ian. Uh, the other one is from Thomas, and the server sent the audio file to one of the uh, Google Cloud platform called a speech to text, and the service uh, transcribed the audio file to text and pass it pass them to the server, and the server create a list with the text and save it into Firebase. A front end side also can access the the Firebase directly. When we build the application, we face some challenges. The first one is that uh, doing web LTC and recording at the same time was a big challenge. Uh, sometimes we got web LTC working, but recording didn't work. Other times, uh, recording worked, but not web LTC. The two processes have to learn the busy uh, coordination phrase. So, 
So, and they are a mix of uh, async and sync methods. So we need to figure out how uh, the, the right order to combine them. Uh, though not uh, ideal way for transcription, uh, we ended uh, we ended up starting uh, WebRTC and recording at the same time uh, for both the caller and the colleague. And next one is about the uh, speech to text. Uh, to create the audio files, we use the video recorder, uh, which is one of the built-in features uh, browsers provide. And after creating uh, audio files, we send it to the service, and the service returned just empty string. We didn't know the what why it happened. The reason was the speech to text has a very strict rule to handle audio files, so. We needed to search for new libraries being able to create a valid audio files. The last one is Firebase. Uh, we thought the Firestore has most of the queries uh, normal databases have, but it doesn't. For example, a Firestore doesn't support uh, logical or queries. So you, if you want to get A or B information, you need to create two queries. Give me A, give me B, and merge them. And sometimes we needed to change the, our uh, data structure because it doesn't work with the queries. That's it. And I will pass it on to Tommy. Okay, thank you, man. Um, so some of the future features of this application we'd like to implement. Uh, first off is we'd like to make it more like a phone. Currently it's just a web app. It's a responsive web app, but we'd make, like to make it so that you can hold it up to your ear, use it like a phone, and also so that it rings if it's on a table, something like that. Which would lead us straight into mobile native development. Make it work with iOS and Android natively. Another thing we'd like to show is a, tra a progress bar for your transcription. Um, if you saw in the demo, you might have noticed that it can take a couple of seconds for the transcription to come down. So if it's a long conversation, it could take quite long, so we'd like to show progress of how far, how long it would take. And this kind of leads us on to the biggest challenge we have is to improve performance with less data. Right now we're using a lot of data, so the main goal to level up the app and make it ready for major public use and thousands of users would be increase the data performance and bandwidth. Um, we'd also like to offer recording and playback of audio options, so you can get down an MP3 of your call or just play it um, live through the application. And definitely add multilingual functionality and translation options to it. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we were at Team Nightshade and thank you for listening to our app, uh, our presentation. If you have any questions, please come up to us afterwards and we'd be happy to chat with you. Thank you. Team Nightshade, that was uh, incredible. Uh, our next um, team will be talking about their project called Crowd Story. But before they do that, I'm going to share uh, some fun thing happened to us. Um, we had an activity uh, for voice projection, and uh, yeah, Yumi san came and taught us uh, how to project our voice. Uh, she's an opera singer and she just short tell you how she taught us to project our voice. Uh, right everybody, uh, after me. <laughs> you can imagine how good Priscilla sounded for one hour. Uh, uh, please uh, give it up for uh, Team uh, Smashing Pineapples. We would like to introduce to introduce you to our project that we have been working on for the past three weeks called Crowd Stories. Uh, we, being Ben, Anya, and me, Konstantin, and as, yeah, we are the Smashing Pineapples. So, what is Crowd Stories? Uh, Crowd Stories is a micro-social investment video sharing social networking service. 
And to give a little more insight on one, uh, what that exactly means, we have for one prepared a few or two user personas. So our, fifth, uh, our first user persona is Akello, and Akello is from Ethiopia. He's a teenager from Ethiopia, and in his free time, he likes to create pineapple wine for and share it with his friends and family. And one of the things that gets him motivated the most is people showing love and support for what he's doing. And also one of his goals is to create a more positive image of his country by doing what he loves. So what he's thinking is, I'd like to share my work with the world. And our second user persona is called Mr. Suzuki. Suzuki is a Jap Japanese native and he is, uh, he is enjoying a high retirement pension. And what he likes to do in his free time is to browse the web and uh, look at videos of all kinds. And while he's doing that, he has this little voice in his head that is telling him that he should do something for the world, he should help people. So what he's thinking is, I'd like to support meaningful causes. Now how exactly do these two people connect with each other? Through our app. And how exactly that happens, uh, Anya's going to explain to you now. Okay, thank you, Konstantin. So, the concept of our app is to support other people feeling like a friend to them, not like uh, a savior, and also sending them positive energy and applause, not the feeling of pity. So, thanks to our application, uh, Akelo can make uh, some video about how he's making pineapple wine and supporting his community. And Mr. Suzuki can see it in his house, uh, and when he, if he likes it, and enjoys what Akelo is doing, he can send a small donation by liking the videos. So in our app, uh, Mr. Suzuki can charge uh, his account and make donations to other people, but in case uh, he wants to just use free account, we make the option to use only to like only one video a day. So thanks to our application, Akelo can feel supported by the other people and get the positive energy to continue what he's doing. But also Mr. Suzuki has a very easy option to send, do send donations um, from his higher retirement pension and uh, help other people very easily. So now Ben will demonstrate the demo of our application. Okay, thank you, Anya. Uh, so um, as we get the demo ready, um, I want you to just get in the mindset. Um, you are Mr. Suzuki and you're about to use our app. Um, so the first thing you're going to see is just a login screen. So we'll log in as Mr. Suzuki, and um, after that, we will be taken to a video feed. So here's our login page, and Kons, could you log in, please? So you'll have a few options. You can log in with your Google account, with your Facebook account, or you can make an account with CrowdStories. Um, so um, we already have an account for Suzuki, so we'll just log in there, and as soon as Kons is done entering some login information, we'll be redirected to a video feed. And when we get to the video feed, we can browse around and look for interesting projects that we want to support. Okay, we're almost there. Here we go. Videos, there we go. So um, you can see there's lots of interesting videos to like. Um, Const, did you try giving a like to something you, you find interesting? Okay, good. Um, how about another one? Okay, oh, error, charge your balance. So you get one free or sponsored like every day. Um, but after that, you have to pay, and we don't have any balance. Um, let's try to add some balance. Cons, can you go to the dashboard, please? Oh, your current credit is zero. Let's charge some credits, please. Okay, so we'll enter some amount of, of yen. And um, by the way, all of this payment is uh, done with Stripe. So we integrated Stripe.js with, um, with our app, and we're just entering some test credit card information from Stripe, so don't worry about uh, averting your eyes or anything. Okay. So as soon as this is completed, you should be able to see our balance go up. Okay, great. So our credit is 100 yen. Excellent. So let's go back and try to like some more things. Okay, how about that first video? Can I like it again? Oh, I can like it as many times as I want. Great. Okay, so now I, I've used up my money, so I'm going to spend more. Uh, okay, awesome. So there's also comments if you really like a video and you want to chat about it or say something else. You can view some comments. Const, would you like to post a comment on this feed? Nice video. Excellent. Nice comment. And there it is. Okay, great. So, moving onwards. 
Um, besides all of this, um, you might have noticed uh, that there's a button in the middle with a plus. That's where you can upload photos. Uh, sorry, upload videos. Come on, so just take a look. Okay, great. So you can either record your own video, or you can select one from the gallery. I think we've got something prepared. Um, okay, great. Looks like there's a very cute Pikachu video we can select and give it a nice title, give it a description. As you can see, there's a, a, it says pick tags. You can also tag your uh, videos. You might have noticed a big filter bar on the video feed. So if you want to filter your video by a certain category, you can do that as well. Um, okay, so we've just saved the video and we're good to go. Um, so that's going to end our demo. As you can see, video uploaded successfully. Excellent. All right, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the tech that we use in this app. Um, so as soon as we're back to our slideshow, we can go um, for the mobile app. We decided to use React Native. The reason for this was we really wanted to do something cross-platform. Currently, it's only available on Android, but we hope that pretty quickly we can get something available on iOS as well. Um, we also have a backend. So we built a server. Oh, oh sorry, wrong way. Apologies. Uh, we built a server using Adonis. Adonis is a Node framework, it's an MVC framework, and it just made things really smooth for us. Um, the testing um, abilities in Adonis are really great. Um, so we used that, we uh, incorporated PostgreSQL database, and deployed it all on Heroku. Um, besides that, we also made use of some really awesome services. So the first one is Amazon Web Services. We used S3 to store all of our videos in. Um, Stripe for the payment, as I mentioned before. And Auth0. Auth0 is a, a really uh, great service that we've used for authentication and logging in, um, as you saw on the first screen. And last but not least, we use CircleCI for our continuous integration. Um, okay, so that's all for the tech. I'm going to pass it on to Constantine, who's going to tell you about some challenges. Hey, man. Um, so, as usual with a project of this size, there are a few challenges that we have faced during our development. One of them being, especially in the beginning of the project, there were problems uh, with setting up the environments and things like that that uh, we could not help each other solve as every single one, every single person on our team has a different operating system. And another uh, challenge that we have faced is that Stripe unfortunately does not have any official React Native implementation, but uh, we were able to overcome this problem with the usual Stack Overflow, Google, and GitHub issues. And now Anya is going to tell you some about some of our future potential features. Thank you, Constantine. Uh, so here are some features that we plan for our app in the future. So at the moment, unfortunately, we only can use our app on Android, so we plan to make also iOS version and also web application. Uh, also, we'd like to implement the functionality to subscribe to the channels of the creators that uh, the videos you like the most. Uh, yes. At the moment, our app doesn't really control what videos are uploaded and what not, so we'd like to have some button to report the videos that aren't appropriate for this application. Uh, we'd like to have the functionality to donate a bigger amount of money than just a small uh, 10 yen likes. And also, last but not least, to create the, some template format for the creators to make the creation of their videos more, more easy. So we'd like to thank the most Nanami who's here today and she gave us this amazing idea for this application. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, she's the creator of the Proud Story NGO. And yes, thank you so much for listening. Uh, here are our social media uh, contacts and you can download our application from there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Team Smashing Pineapples. I hope everybody's feeling really excited and uh, feel like dancing or listening to music because uh, our next uh, project is a dancing app. And I'm not even going to talk about anything else because I just feel like dancing and I'm going to dance. So there we are, just dancing until my team is going to set up the application. Are we ready, team? Okay, so let's go. <laughs> thank you very much for staying until the last presentation, and thank you for people watching the live stream. 
So we are Team Crazy Bananas and very excited to present our app, Ruby Ruby. We are Team of four, Florian, Johannes, Shirti, and me, Yasu. We will be talking about five things. First, we the project idea and demo, and what kind of technology we use, uh, what kind of te technical challenges we face, and future features that we are planning to implement. Do you like to dance? while you're at home in front of a mirror? Because <laughs> if you do, you are like an anime. She's a 25 years old, loves anime and dancing. She owns a story costume, as you can see. She lives in a one-room apartment, and she dances in front of a mirror. So what does she think? She wants to get her dancing score. <laughs> so we created an app. We created an app. Motion tracking dance app that scores your moves. There are two major functions. First, you can dance to match recorded moves. The second one, you can record your own dance routine. So it's a dance time. I'll pass this to Shruti and she's gonna do demo. Thank you, Yasu. So now I'll be showing the app that we made in last three weeks. So as Yasu mentioned that we have two main functions. You can dance to the existing moves or you can record your own moves. So first of all, it's dance time. I will ask Florin to help me with the demo. So if you want to dance, you can basically click here from our top page and it will list all the songs. And each song can have multiple moves or the dance forms. So if he wants to dance on his own version, then I have already recorded. So here it starts. And first of all, you'll have to match the position with the camera, and then it will track where, how he is dancing and following this mannequin and score. Like on the live, uh, you can see the score will be increased, and the body parts that are matched are being highlighted here. All right, the dance finished, and he scored 58, which is the high score. As you can see, the previous high score is 47, so we list the, all the previous high score for this song and this dance before. So previously, he, he himself scored 47, but this time it is 58, so he did pretty well this time. So now he wants to feel like dancing on a different song which is not in our database, let's say a song called Be All Right. And uh, so we will have to record that song and also he will have to record the moves for that song. So how it will basically work is uh, he will dance and our app will record his, all his steps, like for each second it will uh, record all the positions of his body parts and then it will create the dance moves. So if you want to record, you can just click here. You have to enter the YouTube URL of that video and click on start recording. Again, you have to match the position and you match very fast. how you want to like name it so I will again name it as Florin version <laughs> and you save it okay it's saved and if you go back to home page the song should be there now okay. yeah. so the song is here and you can see the Florin version of the moves is also here so it's basically saved in a database now and uh, if, if you want to check out like for this particular profile for yourself uh, which dance songs you have danced on and how much you scored in the past we have a profile page here and what is your total score or the average score so and lastly we have a about us page so if you want to know how our app actually works and how the scoring and all is done so we have a detailed about us page which you can check out and also how to play with our app so that was all about the demo now I will pass to Florin to explain the technologies that we used. All right. 
So I'm going to talk about the technologies that we used. Uh, if you like technologies, then uh, you're like me. I like technologies. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we, we decided to build this app using React and Redux because we thought maybe later on we want to go mobile and use React Native. Uh, we use Material UI for the uh, user experience and interface. We also have a backend with Express, MongoDB, and Auth0 for authentication, and everything is deployed on Hero. Uh, our star technology is a uh, post estimation library from TensorFlow, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit about. Uh, so, what post estimation is? It refers to computer vision techniques to detect human figures in images or videos. Uh, just to be clear, it does not recognize who is in the picture. It simply, the algorithms estimate where key body parts are. Okay, uh, we used a single pose algorithm, which means only one person can stay in the front of the web camera to be scored correctly. Uh, once it scores you, every frame, it will return a 17 key body parts uh, and the score, the confidence score, which means that how that estimation, how good that estimation was. Uh, for our challenges, I'm going to pass it to Johannes. Thank you, Florian. You know, we had several different challenges in making this app. And one of the first was, is it even possible to track the user in webcam in JavaScript? So what we did is, when we got this idea, we thought, let's check out some machine learning uh, libraries and see what we can find. So we started searching, and we found this PostNet, and immediately made a proof of concept. So here you see my beautiful face with red dots, but what happens when it touches the square? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a proof of concept, and with this we decided to, yes, let's do this app. Uh, uh, the second big challenge was the performance. Because the JavaScript is a single thread, that means that it can only do one thing at a time. And PostNet is not as fast, and we also have to do draw a lot of uh, things to the canvas, uh, both the video and the different icons, the mannequin that you saw. And we solved this uh, problem by optimizing our code and also changing the configuration we use together with PostNet. Then there's the problem how to score a dance. Uh, because if you score it too strictly, it's not fun to play because you get zero points no matter how good you are. <laughs> 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 yeah, but if you're too lack with the scoring, you get full score even if you're not moving, so that's not fun either. So here we have a good example. Two different poses, it's quite similar, but they're not the same. So how would you score this? If the left one is correct, how many points would the right picture get? Is it one point, three point, full score? No, not full, but zero is also a bit hard, harsh. Uh, and for future challenges, uh, we want to do more performance improvements. And that's it because we want to bring this uh, uh, app to the mobile. But to be able to do that, it needs to get a little bit faster. And we would also really love to add a community aspect so you can add your friends, challenge your friends, and also share your scores. No, and share your moves. And the moves you have recorded to your friends with just sending them a link and they can try out your dance. We'd also like to add a two player option so you can play against each other, either on different computer, the same computer. And we think that would make this app really hit hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, once again, this is team Yasuk Shruti, Florin, and me, Johannes. Check out our app or contact us either after this demo or through social networks. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, first, I would like to come everybody here on stage.
I would like to thank everybody for coming. This was CC8. <laughs> Feel free to approach us with any questions. We'll be here. Uh, I'm going to pass it to Ian. Yeah. 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 Me hug to. Thank you, everybody. It's been a long night. <laughs> so thank you all so much for coming. Um, I think it's incredible what they've done. And in three months, I oh, that's long. <laughs> my schedule. <laughs> let, me, uh, <laughs> let me just move that. I have to do this in three months. And now it's your turn to confuse the upcoming class about all these different technologies and make them nervous about what they have to do in three months time. So a big round of applause for this current class. business cards, I really want to thank the staff that made this happen today, uh, especially the instruction staff, so Felix, um, and Rachel, Melvin, Dustin.
ていただいてくれて本当にありがとうございます、えー、2ヶ月間でほんあ3ヶ月間<笑><笑> 3ヶ月間で本当にここまであのあのやってくれてあの本当に毎回自分で感動してます、えー、素晴らしかったです、えー、今回は僕はあ,のあえて全然あの見てないんですよで今日初めてあの見たんだけどいや本当にあの感動してます。Good job. あ2年前に始めたばっかりなんですけどもその時に、えー、3ヶ月間会社辞めて、えー、来る人、えー、しかもあのフルタイムで月曜日から金,金曜日まで朝から夕方まで、えー、これは多分無理でしょうって言われた結構あの、まあ、不安だったんですけども、まあ、クラス 8, 8回8期生迎えてあの、まあえー、いいプロダクトができたなって本当に実感してますで今後は日本に来てやった理由もや,やはり、えー、日本に、えーまあ、こういうエンジニアリングリーダーを育ちたいっていうのが結構大きいあのゴールとしてあるんですけども、えー、であの2年間やってあの日本人2、30% しか今いないんですね、クラスに。でこれを非常にちょっと残念に思ってて、えー、でも実は、えー、来月から4月からあの、ファウンデーションというビギナー向けのクラスを初めて日本語でやります。で、それを、えー、きっかけに、今度来年、イマーシブの方も、えー、こ,のこのプログラムも日本語でやる予定でいます。で,でも英語は大事っていうところは忘れてなくて、えー、ほとんどのカリキュラムは英語のまんまででもインストラクションの先生側がちょっと日本語でサポートできる、えー、強いバイリンガルのエンジニアを、えー、中に入れてや,やりたいと思いますなので、えー、今,この後今後、えー、もっともっといっぱい、えー、生徒を卒業して、えー、日本の,このソフトウェア業界に、まあ、インパクトを与えたいとあの本当に心から思っていますですなので<笑>、えーあの、これからちょっとあのあの皆さん、ぜひネットワーキングしてください、で後であのビールとお寿司があるんで、あの本当にここ11時まで、あの11時までにはいなくてあれなんだけど、えー、今日はちょっと楽しく、あのぜひ、えー、皆さんとお話しして、交、え、流、ーまあ、しましょう。ありがとうございますどうも